In our last episode, we met Dima, the leader of the synths at Acadia. He told us that Kasumi Nakano was safe and that we could see her anytime we wanted. But while there, we picked up two quests from his co-founders, Chase and Faraday. Before tracking down Kasumi Nakano, we'll go ahead and tackle these quests. Heading outside, we remember that Nick Valentine just had a bit of a shock. He just learned a lot about his own history. The Institute didn't dump him. He was freed by Dima, who claims to be his brother. We can turn around and see how Nick's doing. Hey, Valentine. What? Oh, sorry. Just got my head full of what Dima was talking about. It's a bit of a shock. Who do you think he is, really? Family? Before I answer, are you okay? Yeah, I'll keep. Don't worry. I just need to figure this all out. Honestly, I don't know what to think, Nick. Yeah. Guess that makes two of us. I don't trust him, Nick. You shouldn't either. It's not really about trust. It's about the facts. I can't deny that he's a synth. A prototype, like me. It's hard to deny it, Nick. The similarities are pretty obvious. I spent a long time wondering if the Institute had made any other prototypes. If I was just a failure, or they gave up, or just plain got bored. I always thought I was just more of their discarded trash. I never thought of the possibility that Someone wanted me out. Helped me escape. There's got to be some kind of proof out there. What really happened between me and Dima? I'd appreciate it if we could keep an eye out. What kind of proof would we be looking for? I don't know. But our best bet is to keep looking into Dima and Acadia. I'll try. But no promises, Nick. We don't even know what we're looking for. Fair enough. I know we don't have much to go on. Just keep me in mind if you find something that might give us some answers. We don't really have time for this, Valentine. You're all heart. Look, I'm not expecting you to just drop everything to search for proof we don't even know exists. Just keep it in mind. Of course, Nick. We'll find something. Thanks. I know we don't have much to go on. Just keep me in mind if you find something that might give us some answers. So Nick wants to find evidence for the claims that Dima is making. But how are we going to find evidence about something that happened a hundred years ago in Boston? As Nick said, our best bet to find this evidence is to continue to explore Acadia and to get to know each of these Acadians as well as we can. And we can start by doing their quests. We'll start with Chase's request first, since she wanted us to head to Far Harbor and talk with Brooks. Remember, she told us that Brooks is really a synth. He's a checkpoint in Far Harbor who meets synths when they arrive on the island. He is a stopping point that helps synths get to Acadia. Chase told us that one of the synths has gone missing, and so we can head to Brooks to find out if he knows anything about the missing synth. I need to talk to you about a missing synth. Yeah? Well, it's not something I talk about with outsiders. So you can either buy something or move along. If that synth got lost somewhere on the island, he could be in real trouble. Don't you care about that? Look, friend, no offense. What I care about is my business. Ah, that famous Bar Harbor hospitality. How could you not love it? It grows on you. Will it be anything else? Look, Chase sent me. So unless you want to piss her off, you better lose the attitude right now. Chase. Hmm. The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't quite place it. Anyway, you want to buy something? I'm working with Chase. She told me that your designation is L-792. Okay, I believe you. Keep it down, all right? It's real private information. I know the synth you're talking about. He's a younger guy. Maybe early 20s with white hair. Goes by the name Derek. Thing is... He showed up way earlier than he was supposed to. Thought a courser was on his tail, so he rushed the timetable. To be honest, the guy was a wreck. He was scared shitless, looking over his shoulder every five minutes and attracting unwanted attention. Tried to calm him down, but he panicked and ran off into the fog. That was the last I saw of him. His response here is really funny, because if we talk to some of the harbor people, they already know that he's a synth. Brooks is a mainlander, too. 
And a synth, whatever that is. Can you tell me anything else? I'm gonna need more information than that if I'm gonna find the synth. I wish I had more to give you. He disappeared into the fog, and I haven't seen him since. That synth could be wandering around out there right now, lost in the fog. I'm gonna need more than that. I've told you everything I know, all right? You let him run off alone? What the hell was I supposed to do? I'm on my own here. Relax. I'll take care of this. Sorry. My nerves are a little shot right now. Look, if you're really going after that synth, I'm pretty sure you took the road south out of town. Maybe you could head that way. Just be careful out there. And thanks. There are many who'd go out in the fog to help a synth. Especially one they don't even know. I feel like shit about what happened. I really do. I hope you can make it right. Oh, great. We've got a synth who decided to wander off into the fog. Well, we already know how that tends to work out, seeing as what happened to small Bertha's parents. Well, all we can do is look for him, heading out of Far Harbor. What did Brooks say? He took the road south out of town. So we'll head south for now. After a bit of a walk, we find an abandoned pre-war trailer park to the right. Here we find a number of trailers with all sorts of goodies inside. We find a Vault-Tec lunchbox in the oven of one. There's a cooler with bottle caps and medex on a picnic table. We see part of a Lobster Grill family restaurant mobile food truck. It's stuffed full of trash, but inside we find a suitcase filled with armor and a duffel bag with pre-war money. In another trailer, we find a bar, and on the bar, a stash of caps. Behind the bar, we find a plastic bin with a stim pack. In another, we find a footlocker with caps and ammunition. And then, as we approach a pre-war gift and candy shop, we find a sleeping bag on the ground covered in blood. Hmm. There's a trail of blood. And this blood forms a trail leading out of the gift shop. This blood looks fresh, not blackened and crusty like pre-war blood. The duffel bag nearby is empty, which means someone has been here and looted it. Under one of the shelves, we find some psycho, and then heading outside, we can try to pick up this trail of blood. We find the next spot lying on the ground next to a wrecked picker-up truck. It continues down the road to the southeast, back behind one of the nearby campers and towards the main drag. Here, we follow the blood trail south, puddle after puddle. Good grief, how much blood did this guy lose? Eventually, the blood trail turns east, goes down a hill, and stops right outside a ruined house. There are pre-war Halloween decorations just outside, and inside, we find some trappers. But these trappers aren't initially hostile. Maybe they're... full? Excuse me. Fresh meat crawling in from the fog? Don't care if it's Meyer Lurk or man. What if it's a Meyer Lurk man? Hey, that would be a great name for a superhero. Leave! Or die! Ugh, they're cannibals? We... survive. But if we have the cannibal perk, that dialogue option turns out differently. I understand. I get the cravings, too. Hey, maybe we can help each other. I'm just looking for a man with white hair. Yes, we can help you. We found him, dragged him here, had our fill. But uh, you're here. What's, what's left is yours. Now go. Don't come back. With that, the trapper gives us his leftovers. Examining our inventory, we see that they've given us a missing synth head. Oh, and examining it in our inventory, sure enough, he's a young man with white hair. It's Derek. They ate him. We can get this head without the cannibal perk if we pass a moderately difficult speech check. I'm not looking for trouble. I just need to find someone, a young man with white hair. You help me, I'll leave. Yeah, we found him. One of the fog's creatures already attacked him. He was bleeding out, but, you know, why waste the meat? Here, well, what's left? Take it. <laughs> now go, don't come back. The trappers claim that they didn't kill him, that a creature from the fog killed him, and they just ate him. It was an opportunistic meal. But if we just detest cannibalism, we can attack. You're dead. That's one way to get the coolant pumping. 
It's not that difficult, and there was only three of them. And if we choose this option, on the body of one, we find the missing synth head. I wouldn't want it going to waste now, would we? What, Nick? <laughs> I guess the game registers the synth head as meat, prompting that response from Nick. I don't see him as a synth who wants to sink his teeth in. Exploring their little trapper home, we see that they are indeed cannibals. At a cooking station next to a stew pot, we see half of a human skull. It can't be that of Derek. We've got his head in our bag. This is some other poor victim they ate. Heading upstairs, we see a ruined pre-war crib with a baby rattle still inside. And nearby, lying slumped over in a chair, is likely the baby's mother. There are a number of interesting sights nearby. This is the road we took to find the Emma's Azalea when doing the quests for Far Harbor. In the next closest house, we find a number of ghouls. <laughs> on the bottom floor of this house, we find a camp box on a side table. Taking the ramp upstairs, we find an expert locked wall-mounted safe with a slew of ammunition inside. Interestingly, they have a Mass Fusion poster on the wall. Interesting to find fans of a Boston Power Company here in Maine. And from here, we find a staircase leading to the attic, but it's blocked in. However, I've got a jetpack. Ah! Here we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk. There's a fallen tree leaning against the attic. Looks like we could have gotten up here even without a jetpack. Interestingly, we find the remains of a statue just outside. The waist of the statue is all that's left on the pedestal. We find the limbs and the torso lying on the ground. On the front porch, we find a woven basket with a teddy bear inside. And if we take the staircase up, we find a small graveyard on a hill that has been decorated with human remains. Possibly the work of trappers, I guess. The tombstones are all cracked, and it looks like all of these graves have been exhumed. We find skeletonized remains all over the place pouring out of the coffins, and sometimes decorating nearby posts. On a bulletin board nearby, we find one piece of Colmex. Pretty rare camp. Nearby, we find another ruined house with a lit lantern on the porch. The door's blocked up, but we see a ramp of wood leading through a hole in the wall. Here we find the woman of the house lying dead on a couch. We can loot a suitcase near to her body. Looks like she was preparing to go, but didn't make it in time. And a cap stash on the ground. Upstairs, we find the skeleton of the man of the house peering through a hole on the floor. On the table is a camera pointing out to sea and a photograph of some city lying on the table. If we follow the line of sight of the camera, we eventually find a bunch of shipwrecks. Trappers have made ramps connecting most of these shipwrecks. In one boat, we find a skeleton and an ammo box. In another, we find an already dead trapper next to a first aid kit. In the next, we see a head peeking out of the cabin. And in the final one, we find another dead trapper on top of it, next to an ammo box. Well, we did a little exploring, but more importantly, we uncovered the fate of poor Derek. Strangely enough, if we go back to Far Harbor and talk to Brooks, he has nothing to say on the matter. We can't show him the head. So to finish the quest, we can head back to Acadia and try to track down Chase. She's not upstairs. So for the first time, we can move downstairs to the second level. We find more containers with tons of ammunition and caps to loot. And we see that the second level is laid out much in the same way as the first, sans the telescope. We find Chase waiting for us in the main chamber. Your missing synth was jumped by cannibal trappers. He didn't survive. That poor bastard. That synth came here to live in peace, and we failed him in the worst way possible. It's my fault. I should have gone out there to meet him. Damn it all. I'm glad we were able to bring some closure to the matter. You deserve this. And... shall we say 200 caps? Given the risks I took to find your synth, I think I deserve more than that. I suppose that's a fair request. 250 caps, then. I've seen the resources you have here. I know you can do better than that. Fine. 300 caps. I'd advise you not to push your luck any further. If you ever want my help again, you're gonna have to pay me some real caps here. I can do 400 caps, but that's as high as I'm willing to go. Don't bother asking for a single cap more. They you said this wasn't the first time a synth has gone missing. Of course not. For someone without weapons or field training, crossing this island is deadly. Just so we're clear, I don't really care about helping you out. 
I'm in this for the caps, and that's it. I assumed as much. I just wanted you to know that your efforts were appreciated. I'm sorry things didn't turn out better. I wish they had. You and I both. Thanks again for your help. Be safe out there. With that, we complete the quest, The Arrival, and Chase rewards us with a legendary Institute rifle. The mods on this thing are randomized each time we get it, so we could abuse it by quick saving just before finishing the quest to get a weapon with the mods that we want, but it always comes with the same legendary effect, the Hitman's legendary effect, which is a brand new legendary effect that comes with Far Harbor. It grants plus 10% to damage while aiming. Oh the weapon has all of the same mods as any other Institute weapon. I really want to like this thing because I love the way it looks. And as I'm playing on my Institute character, it would be a perfect match. But I find that the Institute weapons just burn through ammunition and don't pack as much of a punch. Now we just need to finish Faraday's quest. But while we're here on the second level, we can talk with the other synths here. Looks like this is the primary level where most of the synths hang out. We find a number of ammo boxes on a nearby countertop, and then a fellow named Naveen walks by. Hi. Acadia may not look like much from the outside, but it's all some of us have got. It certainly wasn't what I was expecting, but it means there's hope, right? Oh, sure. A little hope and some duct tape, and all your problems are solved. I know, I know. Not exactly a fortress, is it? Are you disappointed with what you found? I mean, look, I don't want to sound ungrateful. If it weren't for Arcadia and for Dima, I'd probably be dead. I guess I was just hoping for more somehow. There's no room for hope left in this world. Don't say that. Hope is all some of us have. That's a good attitude. Hope can get you through the worst of times. Believe me, I know. When I first escaped, I had no idea what to do with myself. I was so lost. So scared. But I heard rumors of Chase and what she was doing, that she was bringing people to a safe place. A place just for us. And now here I am, for all it's worth. So now you're here, what comes next? I don't know, I really don't. Well, I hope it's worth it. You and me both. You're a fool if you think you're really safe here. Well, it's not like I have anywhere else to go. You're lucky to have found a place in the world. Yeah, I guess. This just wasn't where I thought I'd end up. Any of it. I've just gotta keep telling myself I'm better off here than dead. Yikes. Looks like not everything is glitter and rainbows here in Acadia. I wonder if the other Acadians feel the same way. Behind the counter we find Dejen, who appears to be a bit of a merchant. Excuse me. I assume you're not planning on staying long. Gosh, after a welcome this warm, who wouldn't want to just stay forever? This place isn't for you. Is there a problem with my being here? Maybe. Maybe not. That's a little rude, don't you think? Treat all your guests like this? No. We don't have... guests. I'll probably be leaving soon. That's for the best. Acadia is only as secure as we make it. We take unnecessary risks, we get careless, and things can go bad. Fast. If there's a synth who needs a safe place, then we take them in. Let them live as a synth, without fear. You don't fit that description. That makes you an unnecessary risk. It's nothing personal. Minimizing our contact with outsiders is just practical. You must have tons of friends with this attitude. I don't need friends. Is there anything I can say or do to change your mind? Just don't cause any problems. Too bad it's not your call to make, isn't it? You're right. Dima says you can stay, so you can stay. Doesn't mean I have to like it. You can relax. I'm not a threat. Just don't cause any trouble. What can you tell me about Acadia? It's smaller than I'd like it to be. But then, we don't exactly have the numbers to fill someplace larger. Makes it easier to defend, anyway. Forget it. Did you want something or not? I'll take a look. Sure. It's not much, but it's the best I can do. I don't know whether this guy is just humble or doesn't understand what he has for sale, but Dej in here sells two really cool items. The first is Old Reliable, which is a lever action rifle, a brand new weapon that comes with the Far Harbor DLC with the two shot legendary effect. It shoots an additional projectile. This is just an amazing weapon. It's the end game weapon for my Minuteman sniper character. 
a character I've used in most of my older lore videos, so you've seen me use this weapon quite a lot. It's one of the best realized new weapons that came with Far Harbor. It has a number of amazing mods. It comes with many receiver options and has four barrel options, short, long, short ported, and long ported. Three stock options, short, full, and marksman stock. I love the bullets we see there on the stock with the markman stock and a number of different sight options. And it has two muzzle options, a compensator, or a suppressor, and that suppressor is just cloth wrapped around the barrel. <laughs> I love it. This is the weapon I always wanted back when I first started playing Fallout 4. It's gorgeous, well made, has a brand new ammunition type, which is a bit rarer than I would like, and it just feels fun to hold and shoot. Now, it does come with a glitch. Every time we reload the weapon, it reloads the entire magazine. Even if we've only fired one shot, this can be really annoying for a sniper. But thankfully, there are free mods available that fix this issue. But that's not all. Dejan also sells Sergeant Ash, a legendary flamer. It has the kneecapper legendary effect, granting us a 20% chance to cripple a target's legs. As I'm sure you remember from Saugus, the Flamer isn't exactly new to Fallout 4, so it has all of the same mods as a regular Flamer, but this legendary effect on a Flamer is stunning. Since it rolls the 20% chance to cripple limbs for each attack, and since as a Flamer, it shoots just a steady stream of flame, we trigger the legendary effect multiple times per battle. This gives us an almost guaranteed chance to cripple an enemy when using this sucker in combat. Here I am at the hotel using it against ghouls, and I'm just crippling them and stepping back and letting them hobble to me. <laughs> they can't even get to me. The problem is that it does use flamer fuel, and it uses a lot of it, so we go through fuel really quickly. But still, great little weapon. Dejan has ammo types of all imaginable varieties for sale, and he's got about 400 caps to barter with, so he's an excellent little merchant. But man, what a personality! What is it with these Acadians? They're either depressed or just flat out rude. On the countertop next to Dejan, we find the next issue of Islander's Almanac, Children of Adam Exposé. We receive 10% less damage from radiation-based attacks. Well, I think this is gonna come in handy. With that, we've found four of the five copies of Islander's Almanac on the island. We have only one more to find. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled. Not enough folks value keeping the old CPU sharp anymore. Behind the counter, we find a couple more containers to loot, and a few more Acadians working on the workbenches. We'll talk with Julie here. <clears throat> New girl, right? Must be, <laughs> because I don't recognize you. Look, I'm not anybody worth talking to. My head is killing me. Now's not a good time. What's wrong? We're doing this anyway? Even after saying I don't want to talk? <laughs> God. Nice attitude. He must have tons of friends. Yeah, I'm so broken up about it. Oh, yeah. Practically a five-star resort you got here. Okay, yeah, sure. It's rough around the edges. But someday, it'll be amazing. Sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. It's not your fault. You try having somebody botch a mind wipe on you and see how it feels. Then get back to me, okay? What do you mean, mind wipe? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. You're a synth on the run. You go to someone, you get a new face, and they wipe your mind so the Institute can't find you. Only somebody screwed mine up. <laughs> so here I am. Now just please leave me alone. Sounds like you should get some help. Yes, right. Brilliant. If only I'd thought of that and, oh, I don't know, gone someplace to see synths that could help me. Like maybe Acadia? Thanks so much for the advice. Whatever's going on with you doesn't make it okay to be rude. Okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, well, you couldn't have, so just forget it. Wow. Screw these Acadians, man. They're all a bunch of jerks. They make the people of Far Harbor seem polite. Oh, maybe we'll have better luck with this lady, Miranda. Hi there, Miranda. Hey there. So you're that new gal from the Commonwealth. It's so wonderful to meet someone from back home. 
I'm afraid Kasumi doesn't seem to want to discuss it, but... How are things there? Same as it's ever been, as far as I can tell. Well, that's good to hear. It certainly did have its charms. Feels like things are getting worse by the day. Oh, don't be silly. It was never all that bad. Not really. Getting better every day, I think. Oh, that's so good to hear. You think of the Commonwealth as back home? Aren't you a synth? Well, certainly. Why wouldn't I? It's where I came from. I would like to see it again someday. Once things settle down here. Acadia is all well and good, I suppose. But honestly, it does get a bit boring. If this is boring, I'd hate to see what you consider exciting. Oh, aren't you a card? I'm sure they wouldn't mind one less mouth to feed. Why don't you just leave then? Oh no. I just couldn't leave my dear friends behind. You're safe here. That's what really matters. Hmm, I suppose. One could do with a little excitement now and then, though. Don't you think? No offense, but are you crazy? <laughs> oh, you. I think we're all a little mad in the end. I'm sure I'll see you around. Do take care. Okay, lady. Something a bit off with her. Oh my, aren't you a card? <laughs> what the heck? Who talks like that? Okay. Well, at least she was somewhat decently polite. Maybe they're not all jerks here. Exploring the perimeter of this large chamber, we find a number of containers and a bunch of beds. Looks like this is where the majority of these Acadians sleep. Uh, which means I'm probably looting all of their private possessions. Money and bobby pins from suitcases by their beds, but they don't complain, so hey, I'll take what I can. At the northern end, we find a staircase going down to the bottom floor. We'll go down there to find Kasumi in a bit. And sitting on a couch nearby, we find Cole. Hi. You're new here too, huh? I mean, I haven't been here that long myself. Honestly, I'd be dead right now if it weren't for Chase. Turns out it's pretty hard to live as a synth in the Commonwealth. Do you think you're better off now that you're here? Oh, absolutely. I don't have to pretend, I don't have to lie, and I don't worry that someone's gonna kill me in my sleep. Or worse. It's a tough world for everyone, not just synths. I'm not saying it isn't. Just... Most folks don't want to kill you simply because you exist. You didn't tell people you were a synth, did you? You should have kept it to yourself. Easy for you to say. You haven't had to spend your entire life pretending to be something you're not. I'm sorry to hear that you suffered. Thanks, but it doesn't matter now. I'm here, and I'm safe. And I'm never leaving. I'll see you around, okay? Oh, okay, looks like we found a normal one. And he seems to actually like being here. Uh, the only one we've found so far who likes being here. After looting even more containers going around the perimeter, we see another door on the northern side. This goes upstairs to the observatory. This is the staircase on the other side of that door that required a key that we saw upstairs. It's unlocked now. We see a room behind some glass, similar to Faraday's room. We can move on in to see what's in here. And it looks like a bit of a lab of sorts. Tables covered in potted plants and lots of scientific equipment all over the place. We find two stim packs on a table and two first aid kits nearby. Right next to this is a chemistry station. This must be their medic bay as well. After looting some fertilizer, we can talk with what is presumably the doctor, Aster. Hi. So, I understand you've seen a good bit of our island. What do you think? Quaint. With sort of an old world, burn it to the ground and salt the earth kind of charm. Hmm, interesting. Of course it was already burned to the ground once. I'm not sure attempting that again would yield much. The term hellhole comes to mind. Perhaps a bit harsh, but the environment certainly can be unforgiving. It's kind of beautiful, in its own way. That's... refreshing. Most don't view it the same. I'm glad someone else can see it. You're the one who lives here. What do you think of it? Well, I... I think it's all rather compelling. This island, with all of its danger and beauty, predates you and I. The ecosystem isn't what it once was, but it has adapted, and it will continue to adapt, long after we're gone. What's important, really important in the long run, is understanding it, and then passing that knowledge along to those who will follow us. So, what exactly are you doing? As much as I can, given limited resources. Cataloging specimens, observing evolutionary trends, compiling data for future generations. If 
That's what floats your boat? It gives me a sense of purpose, yes. I like having something worthwhile to which I can dedicate my time. Wow. What a tremendous waste of time. Perhaps. If you're extremely short-sighted. Or maybe you have some better plan for helping future generations survive. That sounds like a noble goal. Well, thank you. I wish more shared the sentiment. I should note that I'm not fully versed in human anatomy, but I'm your best chance of medical assistance should you require it. Since Dima has approved of you, I'm more than willing to offer help. What can you tell me about Acadia? It was originally a place of science. I like that about it. Feels like home in a way. I don't mean the Institute when I say home. More that... Uh, I don't know. That abstract feeling of belonging someplace. We all belong here, in our own way. Dima's to be thanked for that. So, what's your story? Similar to most here, I think. I fled the Institute feeling that anything else would be allowing myself to remain trapped, constantly in fear. I chose not to go into hiding, though. I felt, to do that, I'd lose what makes me... me. <sighs> Does that make sense? If I lost my life, that'd be one thing. To lose my identity... Uh, that was too much to bear. Thankfully, it never came to that. So, here I am. I'd like to help you with your research. Oh, well, that's thoughtful of you. Hmm, okay. What can we have you do? There's a flower native to this island, a species of the genus Aster, that has survived remarkably well. It doesn't quite have the brilliance of color that I understand it once did. Before... Hmm. Well, before the war. I'm personally rather fond of them, but lately have been investigating secondary chemical properties they possess. If you could bring me additional samples, it would speed up my research. I can offer you a meager amount of caps, if that makes the idea more appealing. What exactly is the point of all this? A mix of scientific inquiry and personal interest, I suppose. I'm curious about the changes the species has gone through over the centuries. I also find them beautiful. I'm keeping an eye out for more flowers. Okay. You know where to find me. Aster really likes Aster. So much she named herself after Aster. Aster is a new plant we find growing wild on the island. It's easy to miss though because it's really dark. We can eat it raw. It heals 10 hit points but doses us with two rads. But it's also an ingredient in three craftable consumables. Vim's Captain's Blend, if we get the recipe from the Vim bottling plant. Firebelly, the recipe we already got from Mitch at the last plank. And seasoned rabbit skewers. Yum. The rabbit skewers heals 45 hit points and grants us a plus one luck bonus for 30 minutes. Wow. The rabbit skewers require a bunch of other ingredients that are only found on the island, new to Far Harbor. Black blood leaf, which itself heals 15 hit points and doesn't dose us with rads. We find these growing in water much like regular blood leaf, but we also find a bunch of black blood leaf in Aster's lab. They're all labeled blood leaf, but once we loot them, we get black blood leaf. We can also find one aster growing on these shelves. The skewers also require blight. This is the glowing fungus we found growing next to that child of Adam, whom we passed on the road to Acadia. They grow on the side of trees and are easy to spot from a long distance because they glow so brightly. Like black blood leaf, blight alone heals 15 hit points and doesn't douse us with rads. It also requires lure weed, which we find growing in water. These likewise can be consumed alone, heal 15 hit points and don't douse us with rads. But we have to be careful with these because there's a creature that evolved to mimic the look of lure weed, the angler, which hides in the water, sticking its glowing stalk above the surface to lure in unsuspecting wastelanders. And finally, of course, we need rabbit. Far Harbor introduces the Rad Rabbit to the island. It's a critter, not an enemy. They don't fight back. We'll find them scattered all over the place. I often we find them in the fun. ruins of towns, but they're fast. If we don't use vats to nail them, they can be tricky to kill. On them, we find rabbit legs. They don't really look like rabbit legs. They look more like rabbit chunks. Uncooked, these heal 15 hit points, but douse us with four rads. Black blood leaf is also used to cook another new recipe that comes with Far Harbor, 
chicken noodle soup, which heals 60 hit points over time and grants us plus 55 radiation resistance for 30 minutes. These require two black blood leaf, one carrot, one chicken thigh, and one dirty water. The carrot and dirty water are not new to the game, but the chicken thigh is. Far Harbor introduces the rad chicken, which like the rad rabbit, we've got to chase down. On the rad chicken, we'll find a chicken thigh, which uncooked heals 22 hit points, but douses us with seven rads. Or, instead of cooking up our Aster in a tasty recipe, we can take each Aster we find back to Aster. I have some flowers for you. These will do nicely. Thank you. As promised, here are your caps. And we get eight caps for each Aster we find. Okay, so we found another normal one. That's good. She also functions as a doctor. But sadly, she's not a merchant. She doesn't have an inventory to barter with. But that's offset by the guy we find nearby. Behind the counter in this room, we find a guy in a red rocket jumpsuit sweeping up the floor. This is Cog. Hey there. Sounds like you got the all clear. So what's your story? Why do you care? I suppose I don't really. Just not too many visitors lately. That new girl and now you. I'm just taking a look around. Sure you are. Just of your own accord. No particular reason. Nothing to do with that Kasumi girl, right? Not really any of your business, is it? Sure, sure. None of my business. Seems odd is all. This Kasumi girl shows up, convinced she's a synth, then not long after, here you are looking around. I came here looking for Kasumi. Oh, isn't that sweet of you? That Kasumi's a good enough kid, I suppose. A little confused, maybe. But then, aren't we all? Not that anyone's asking, but I'll tell you. It all gets easier to deal with when you realize none of it matters. What you are, where you came from, let go of all that, and life gets simple. That sounds pretty bleak to me. It's all in how you look at it. Is there anything you care about? I mean, staying alive is preferable to not. Beyond that, what's the point of caring? You must be the life of the party around here. Hey, if we had parties, I damn well would be. Yeah, I hear you. Is that so? Huh, most of the chumps here act like I'm out of my gourd. Good to know someone else sees it my way. Anyway, lately I've taken to amusing myself with trading. Don't have much to work with, but I'm always happy to make a good deal. Let me know if you need something. I probably won't have it, but let me know anyway. So, what's your story? Me? <laughs> no story here. Not one that matters, anyway. Like I said, it's not worth holding on to. Nice of you to ask, though. Anything interesting you can tell me about Acadia? God, no. Have you looked around this place? Death by boredom is a legitimate concern. So? Come on, you want to do a little trading? I'll take a look, sure. The best Acadia has to offer, coming right up. I don't know if it's just the way he talks or his personality, but I finally found an Acadian I like. He claims to have the best Acadia has to offer, and he's not far from the truth, for on his inventory, we find the Recon Marine chest piece for sale. If you recall, in an earlier video, we found the Recon Marine helmet on Brooks's inventory in Far Harbor. This is the matching chest piece. It comes with a legendary effect that reduces damage while standing still and not moving by 15%. Before perks are considered, it has a ballistic damage resistance of 50, an energy damage resistance of 49, and 10 radiation resistance. But it weighs a whopping 25 pounds. We now have two pieces of a marine armor set. We need the arms and the legs. We'll have to keep a lookout for them. Cog-like Dejin sells a bunch of ammunition and has over 600 caps to barter with. Another wonderful merchant. Behind his counter, we can loot a first aid kit and an ammo box, and in the back of the room, we find his bed. On a barrel next to his bed is Cog's journal. Help Faraday move some of Dima's equipment to the observatory area. Bad enough that those things are so damned heavy, but Faraday always insists that I empty my pockets in case I'm carrying something that would disrupt the sensitive instruments that blah, blah, blah. Look, I get it, the boy's in love, but I could whack Dima's computers with a sledgehammer and it wouldn't damage a damn thing. So we're in the upper deck of the observatory, I finish putting everything I got on the table, and Chase comes in and starts yelling at Faraday about some emergency meeting they're supposed to have. So of course Faraday leaves me to push around the computers on my own. I went to Dima and complained, but he just says I need to focus on the negativity within and accept the people around me as they are. Yep, another damn sunny day in Acadia. <laughs> well, at least Cog's dealing with it okay. But man, after talking with all these people, I just kind of feel depressed. Is this the realization of Dima's grand vision? All of these depressed, bored, lonely people without hope or ambition? Well, maybe if we help out, it'll improve things around here. 
and we can continue to do so by next tackling Faraday's quest. But sadly, I am all out of time. We'll search the sunken ship for those data storage devices in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Sacrifices have to be made. If you agree with Dima that sacrifices must be made, you can find this shirt in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. It comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and Patreon patrons are becoming increasingly more important as YouTube continues to make changes to their platform that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So an extra special thanks to each and every one of my patrons and members. You guys make this channel possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.